Hey everybody, how's it going out there? Adapa11 here with another Star Wars action figure review. This here we have Star Wars The Legacy Collection Joker Squad. Here in the package we have Lord Melville, Sergeant Harkus, Anson Trask, Jess Gisting, Hondo Carr, and Vax Portor. Sorry for any mispronunciations there. Well, let's take a look. Well, this 2008 production from the Legacy Collection is associated here with Star Wars Legacy Comics. Apparently number four, according to the back right here. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the comic in here. That would be nice because I looked on Wikipedia just to get a heads up on Lord Melville and I, I really am uh, going to have to get the comic and read it. So, I digress. Let me get on here to the back. The Stormtroopers of the 407th Division, Anson Trask, Sergeant Harkis, Jez Jistang, Hondo Carr, and Vax Portor are sent to take down one of their own. The 908th Division is going to defect to former Emperor Fell's side against the current Sith regime. The 407th is ordered to stop them and Sith Lord Melville joins them to ensure they finish the job. Trask's first mission as a stormtrooper challenges ideals as well as his courage and has dire consequences for the rest of the Joker squad as well. So I am very intrigued by the storyline, but I know nothing about it to go any further, so... This will be only a review on the action figure. So, without further ado, let's do a review. Okay, so here we have Vax Potor. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And I I dig it. Hmm. So here we have a really well sculpted face and some really good articulation. So let us begin here with the sculpt. Zoom in. And you can see here he is a young Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Okay, okay, okay. So he, he's not from uh, Star Trek, but he's got that nice uh, sleek look and the eyebrows here. I like how they are painted <laughs> on there and somewhat exaggerated to give it that devilish look, I suppose. He's clean cut and really, I mean, there's not much detail if you just look at it. It's just a bald guy, bald stormtrooper. Though it's pretty good detail with the ear there, I must have to admit. So, as you can see here, the head does rest on top of, it is ball articulated. Not tight, it's actually a really good, really good fit there. Ball joint at the shoulders. Let me zoom back here for you. Okay, bilateral movement. Um, ball articulated shoulders and elbows and wrists rotate. They do not, okay, they just uh, pretty much swivel. And uh, there is abdominal crunch. And he can not move at the waist. Just the abdominal crunch, that's fine. Uh, I don't really want to, I guess he can go around um, all the way there. And you can see here, one of the differences with the belt is at least the canister here does not constantly fall off like I had that problem with the Legacy Collection <clears throat> Han Solo and Luke Skywalker. I think it's Legacy Collection where they're in disguise and the canisters are constantly falling off. But anyways, you can see here that the belt is all white and the holster here is not black. It's white as well. And the articulation at the legs or hips swivel forward and back. And there is no abduction at the hips, 
ball, uh, ball joint at the knees. You can see here. And here we do have good articulation, great articulation, ball joint at the um, ankles. And they do have a little lever there, swivel there. Okay, so you see here that we have a really fine articulated army builder to add, not to mention he's straight up Joker squad. But let's look at his blaster here. I have a habit of keeping these ties on here so they don't easily fall off. But I think I'm gonna have to ditch that habit. There is no paint. Come on now, focus. There we go, or zoom. Okay, so there is no paint job on to, on the uh, blaster. And let's take a look at his helmet to see if there is any special design on the helmet. And as we can see here, it's pretty much your typical helmet for a stormtrooper. Okay, put them on. Give you a take, give you a look at. Wow. Okay, there we go. Give you a look at what he's like with the helmet on. Um, I mean, it's it's a stormtrooper. So. Oh well, you know what? I guess maybe. It's ooh. So okay. So there we go. So it's gonna be a tight fit. You get that. Okay. As you can see here, it looks like this particular, and this is the helmet that goes to him. The head is so loose that his chin go, uh, crunches up against his chest, and I'm going to kind of have to force the helmet here. Gosh, this is a bummer. Yeah, I really do that. It's a tight fit. This is unfortunate. I haven't had this problem before. So his bald, slick head... Um, doesn't work with this helmet. It's it's small. Gosh, it's gonna be interesting to see what the other guys how their helmets fit, being that they have hair. Okay, so well, that's really a bummer. I even you know, I'm darn sure that's the one that's closest to him. Okay, so I just kind of have to force it on there. So I will not. I uh, take this off often. Uh, that's because I don't want to wear out that paint. But there, I had to just kind of force it on there. The head's so loose. So I guess we see here from that demonstration that uh, one of the pros of having a, a loose head on a ball, on the ball joint there is, uh, well, you got to work it. And then once you get it on there, it stays on there. Gosh, I got lost in thought there. I'm so disappointed with uh, how loose that is. Um, anyways, I guess that's it. Um, hmm, first time I've had that problem. So we'll see how the other ones work. Well, anyways, thank you for watching, everybody. I really appreciate uh, that uh, hitting that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more. Again, thanks for your time. May the force be with you and take care, everybody.